Here are some quick facts about COVID-19 and how it spreads. I'll be citing my sources in the description and at the end of this video. I'm Lorena, let's get started. So here are the points that we're gonna go over. One, it's in the air. Two, people with no symptoms are still contagious. Three, children are bioweapons. Four, you're probably fine if you get it. Five, it's still super deadly, so take it seriously. And six, the best thing we can do is stay the f away from each other. So let's break these points down. One, COVID-19 is primarily transmitted through the air. It's not an airborne pathogen, as in it's not gonna come find you if you take a step outside, but it is transmitted through virulent airborne particulates coming from other people. This means that even if you use hand sanitizer and don't shake hands and don't touch your face, you can still contract the virus if you are in proximity with someone else who has it. Two, the latest research has shown that the primary spreaders of COVID-19 are actually people who are asymptomatic, as in they do not exhibit symptoms. This could either be because they are in the incubation phase and the symptoms have not yet taken hold, or because they are children under the age of 19, especially smaller children, which have been shown to sometimes not develop any symptoms for the entire duration of the virus. So let me emphasize that and make it point three. Small children may never develop symptoms and still infect everyone around them. Yes, children are little bioweapons. Four, don't panic though. If you contract the virus, you will in all likelihood be just fine, unless you are very old or have an underlying health condition. Most of us will get over the virus by just resting at home and taking meds like we would with any other illness. It's estimated that 80% of people who contract COVID-19 only develop mild symptoms, so don't freak out. Five, still take it seriously though. The fatality rate for coronavirus is in the range of 10 times that of the flu but the rate varies hugely by age, being far more lethal to the elderly, as I'm sure you've heard. Assuming a modest 1% mortality rate and an even more modest 50% infection rate, 1.5 million Americans can die in the next 12 to 18 months. To put that in perspective, last year, 700,000 people died of heart disease, 600,000 died of cancer, and 55,000 died of influenza and pneumonia. So what do we do? Six. <laughs> since it spreads through the air and we have no idea who's contagious or not, since people with no symptoms are still contagious, the best thing we can do is take social distancing very seriously. And we do that to protect those of us who are most vulnerable, of course, people with underlying health conditions and the elderly, which are susceptible to the full lethality of the disease, but we also do it so we avoid everyone getting sick at the exact same time and over flooding our healthcare systems. That's what people are talking about when you hear them say flatten the curve. It's about avoiding everyone getting sick at once and spreading it out instead. So I'm going to elaborate now on the biggest takeaway, which for me is asymptomatic contagion. Italian researchers have estimated that asymptomatic individuals are responsible for 50 to 75% of the spread. Check out this graph, which compares South Korea and Italy's progressing coronavirus case counts. South Korea tested people who were both symptomatic and asymptomatic, and Italy only tested people who had symptoms. Surprise, surprise, look what happened there. So, when you turn on the TV here and see the official coronavirus case count for the United States, just know that it means actual jack shit. Because in this country, test kits are only available and administered to people who are already gravely ill. Here's what it's like to try to get a COVID-19 test in the vast majority of the United States today, unless you're a celebrity. First, you experience symptoms. Then, a doctor has to determine whether or not your symptoms warrant a coronavirus test. Then, that doctor has to ask the CDC for it. And the CDC then determines for themselves whether or not they think your symptoms warrant a test. And you might be thinking, Lorena, but you just said like 20 times that people with no symptoms are still contagious. Yes, that is the problem. Only people who tested positive would have had to stay home, but, that is not the case. So now all of us have to quarantine in case all of us have it because we have no way of knowing who has it or not because we have no f***ing test kits. And with that, we've reached the end and I'm sure you're very happy about it. So take care of yourselves and please don't fall for misinformation. If you're one of the people who shared this, I'm judging you. Listen only to the doctors and scientists that are actively working on this. I'm serious. Don't listen to me. 
read and watch from the sources that I've listed in the description of this video. I just wanted to make something that was quick and easy to share. I got most of my information from the World Health Organization, Michael Osterholm, which is the director of the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy, and UCSF's COVID-19 panel notes from March 13th. So stay safe, stay home, watch movies, f off, have a good night. You did it.